Phragmites are actually the world's most widely distributed flowering plant. It's a tall perennial grass. It uh, grows up to be about 15 to 18 feet tall. It's found in wetlands worldwide. Phragmites can be found throughout the Mid-Atlantic region and throughout Pennsylvania. You'll typically see them on the coastal environments. You can even find them on the sides of highways. And they're usually found at the land-sea interface. So someplace between the coastline and the upland environment are areas where they typically dominate and grow. Phragmites is a really challenging you know, species. It's actually native to North America, but what we're dealing with for the most part is an invasive genetic lineage that came in sometime during the 1800s. It forms really dense monocultures, and by that it just grows nothing but Phragmites, and what it does is it outcompetes other native plants, and it changes the habitat. So those changes in ecosystem structure by changing the plant community are going to change potentially the function of that ecosystem. But it's also providing fundamental insights as to how organisms are responding to climate change. I've been studying Phragmites for over 30 years now, and people have been managing Phragmites for almost 50 years. And little research has been done to really evaluate, are we doing a good thing? You know, how effective is ecosystem management? And we can tell you that we're really good at killing Phragmites, but are we good at predicting the trajectory of the marsh in the future? Sea level rise is the master variable in terms of trying to understand whether or not ecosystems can keep pace, right? It doesn't matter how many nutrients we give them, if the sea level rise rate is too quickly, the plants are going to drown. So in my research, I was trying to understand how does management influence the ability of an ecosystem to keep pace with sea level rise. We had controlled sites where we had Phragmites referenced, we had a Phragmites sprayed, and we had native plant communities. And we measured things such as rates of soil decomposition, soil carbon pools. So we're trying to estimate the amount of carbon stored in these soils. So the more organic matter or more carbon, we tend to have more um, airy soils. And if it's more mineral matter, we see the soils are a little bit more densely packed. So that's really important because if we have more organic matter, they're gonna be storing more carbon than those densely packed soils. So this is a soil core we've taken from a marsh. And here you can see that we've actually removed some sections for analysis. And where we've removed those sections, you can see some roots that actually introduce carbon into the soil. And that's how these wetlands store carbon. So the first step is we can take out a slice and we'll dry it in an oven at 100 degrees Celsius for about, 24, for about 48 hours until we evaporate out all the water. So then what we're left with is something like this. So this is a dry soil sample and this will give us what we call the bulk density or the amount of soil per unit area subtracting for the amount of water. The next step in the process, if we want to figure out how much organic matter is stored in the soil, we'll take this soil sample and we'll put it into a really hot oven. So these samples have been inside the muffle furnace at 550 degrees for four hours. They have since cooled, and this is what's left over is all the inorganic material with all the organic carbon burnt off. Then we can calculate by mass lost how much organic matter was lost. We can actually calculate the total amount of carbon stored within the soils. So we found that, you know, herbicide management of, of glyphosate actually changed the ecosystems in many ways. So first we found that it increased rates of decomposition. So that means it's releasing more carbon to the atmosphere. We also found that when the herbicide killed Phragmites, it actually lowered the soil share strength. And that's the ability of the plant roots to hold together the soil. That meant that those soils are more likely to fall apart and washed away. And that was really evident when we tried walking through those spray sites, you were literally sinking up into your knees if you were to go out there, versus the native plants had the roots that stabilize the soil that allow you to walk on them, right? So the net effects of looking at herbicide management is we accelerated rates of decomposition, we decreased the soil shear strength or the ability of the plants to keep together the roots. And we found some evidence, but not statistically significant, that we started to lo lower the amount of carbon stored in the soils. We need future studies to verify in the long term, you know, did we actually lose more carbon um, than, you know, as a consequence of management. I can tell you that having worked in coastal salt marshes for the last you know, 20 plus years, I have seen changes in plant communities as we're shifting to plants that are more flood tolerant. So we're seeing actually species moving. Some of our high marsh grasses are disappearing because they're not as flood tolerant. We can see the changes in plant communities over the last five to 10 years because of these shifts in, of sea level rise, which is impacting the way these, the communities form and the organisms who live there. I'm not really advocating for a cessation of Phragmites management, 
but more, re more really uh, a reevaluation of where and when we manage, because we need to acknowledge that our management actions may actually destabilize coastal wetlands. Um, you know, we need to think carefully and I encourage land managers to think about, is there a scenario when we can potentially leave Phragmites as an alternate stable state that can buy us time through this period of accelerated sea level rise? Because, you know, I think it's important that we have a marsh that's providing some function versus our native plant communities that may not be able to keep pace with these rates of accelerating sea level rise and global change.